you've tied it back and you've worn it down. You've dyed it blonde, but your roots are brown. And you've asked me now a thousand times what I prefer, 'cause you can't decide. The truth is, whatever you do, I, I know there'll be no change in my mind. 'Cause I want you for the worst and for the better. All you do, but you don't realize ooh, 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 that I love you for you, baby. Ooh, 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 for all the things you can't change. Get on the aisle, baby. Still, when you're always late, when you talk through films, but I like the way you say what's on your mind. Oh, Even oh, when you try to stop yourself, can you tell?
So a warm welcome to Lynn Baptist Church. I hope you're able to feel relaxed here today and to celebrate in the joy and happiness of this special day. But everything that happens today we do in the presence of God and it's to God now we turn in prayer as we start our service together. Loving God, we thank you for this great day of celebration. We thank you for the love that Daniel and Chloe have for each other. We thank you for the love that you have shown each of us and your love that is demonstrated through the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that his spirit will be very present with us this afternoon, as promised us and made, as love is declared, as your word is read, as your praise is sung. We pray that today will be a blessed day, a great day, a day of new beginnings, and a day of remembering your love for each of us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to say something as we sing our first song together, Amazing Grace.
So we now come to what is really the reason why we're here today. It's the central part of the service where Chloe and Dan are going to make vows to one another. But first of all, we have an explanation of what Christian marriage is all about. We gather in the presence of God to witness the joining of Chloe and Daniel in marriage. We come to surround them with our prayers and to ask for God's blessing upon them so that they may be strengthened in their life together and nurtured in their love for God. God has created us male and female and gives us marriage so that a husband and wife may help and comfort each other, living faithfully together in need and in plenty, in sorrow and in joy, in sickness and in health throughout all of their days. God gives us marriage for the full expression of the love between a man and a woman. In a marriage, a woman and a man belong to each other and with affection and tenderness freely give themselves to each other. God gives us marriage for the well-being of human society, for the ordering of family life and for the birth and nurture of children. God gives us marriage as a holy mystery in which a man and a woman are joined together and become one, just as Christ is one with the church. In marriage, husband and wife are called to be a new way of life, created, ordered and blessed by God. This way of life must not be entered into carelessly or from selfish motives, but responsibly and prayerfully. We rejoice that marriage is given by God, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, let marriage be held in honour by all. So we come to that part of the service where you are going to make vows and commit to each other before God. So could I just ask you to stand forward, please? So first of all, we have to make the legal declarations. So if any of you knows of any reason why you may not lawfully marry, you should say so now. So Chloe, would you repeat after me? <laughs> Chloe, I declare. I declare. That I know. That I know. Of no legal reason. Of no legal reason. Why I, Chloe Alexandra Smith. Why I, Chloe Alexandra Smith. May not be joined in marriage. May not be joined in marriage. To Daniel James Newbury. To Daniel James Newbury. And Daniel, can you say after me? <clears throat> I declare. I declare. That I know. That I know. Of no legal reason. Of no legal reason. Why I, Daniel James Newbury. Why I, Daniel James Newbury. May not be joined in marriage. May not be joined in marriage. To Chloe Alexandra Smith. To Chloe Alexandra Smith. Daniel, are you willing to give yourself in marriage to Chloe? I am. Will you love her and comfort her, honour and keep her, in sickness and in health, and be faithful to her as long as you both live? I will. Chloe, are you willing to give yourself in marriage to Daniel? I am. Will you love him and comfort him, honour and keep him in sickness and in health, and be faithful to him as long as you both live? I will. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? With God's help, I do. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you today for the gift of love. We thank you for the love that has brought Chloe and Daniel to this point in their lives. The place where they seek to honour you, to honour each other, by declaring their commitment to live faithfully in Christian marriage for the rest of their lives. By your spirit, we pray that you will bless this day. Amen. Amen. Now, I've got a question for everybody. So, I'm going to ask you to stand in a moment. When I've asked the question, I'd like a really strong we do afterwards. Because marriage flourishes best when friends and family support. So, can I ask you all to stand? And the question is this. Do you, the families and friends of Chloe and Dan, give your blessing to them? And do you promise in good times and bad to do everything in your power to support them in their marriage? We do! Yes! yes. <laughs> that was fantastic. You can sit down. And what a great just moment to think of all these people who have got your back, who are for you and are praying for you. 
So Chloe and Daniel have told us of their intention to marry, of their willingness to share in both the good times and the bad until the end of their lives. So we come now to the covenant where they become husband and wife. And Daniel, we're going to go first. So would you say after me? Before God. Before God. And in the presence. And in the presence. Of this congregation. Of this congregation. I, Daniel James Newbury. I, Daniel James Newbury. Take you, Chloe Alexandra Smith. Take you, Chloe Alexandra Smith. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. As your husband. As your husband. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. And to this end. And to this end. I give you my word. I give you my word. Chloe, would you repeat after me? Before God. Before God. And in the presence. And in the presence. Of this congregation. Of this congregation. I, Chloe Alexandra Smith. I, Chloe Alexandra Smith. Take you, Daniel James Newbury. Take you, Daniel James Newbury. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. As your wife. As your wife. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. And to this end. And to this end. I give you my word. I give you my word. Chloe and Dan are now going to exchange rings. Let's pray. God of steadfast love, by your blessing may these rings be to Chloe and Dan, symbols of the vow they have made this day, and of the covenant into which they have entered. By your grace, help them to be faithful to each other in unbroken love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Chloe, you're going to go first. Okay. Two seconds. Ooh. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Chloe, do you want to say that to me? I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am. All that I am. I give to you. I give to you. And all that I have. And all that I have. I share with you. I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Brilliant. Dan, do you want to go next? Do you want to say that to me? I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So before God, and in the presence of this congregation, Chloe and Dan have made their solemn vows to each other. They have joined hands and given and received rings, binding themselves in the covenant of marriage. I therefore pronounce them husband and wife in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. <laughs>
That which God has joined, may no one separate. <laughs> you may now kiss the bride. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let's pray. Gracious God, for the promise, for the hope and for the love of this day, we give you praise. We pray that you will bless Dan and Chloe now with the gift of your Holy Spirit that they may build a life of joy and fulfilment on the foundations of commitment and love. By your grace, sustain them through the love and support which surround them now. Lord, we pray that you will fill them afresh with your love. Help them to remain open-hearted, courageous and strong. We pray that you will give them understanding and a generosity of spirit, to be patient and delight in each other. And Lord, we pray that their marriage may be a symbol of your love, from which nothing can separate us and from which nothing can overcome. We pray that you will be with them now and remain with them forever. Amen. 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 Can I congratulate you? Yes. You got that. That's amazing. <laughs> We're going to all stand together and we'll sing our next song, which is called The Way.
Our Bible reading this afternoon is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 18. Transformed relationships. Let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another. And never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honour of one another. Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion towards Him boiling hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let Him fill you with excitement as you serve Him. Let this hope burst forth from within you, releasing a continual joy. Do not give up in a time of trouble, but commune with God at all times. Take a constant interest in the needs of God's beloved people and respond by helping them, and eagerly welcome people as guests into your home. Speak blessing, not cursing, over those who reject and persecute you. Celebrate with those who celebrate, and weep with those who grieve. Live happily together in a spirit of harmony, and be as mindful of another's worth as you are of your own. Don't live with a lofty mindset, thinking you are too important to serve others, but be willing to do menial tasks and identify with those who are humble-minded. Don't be smug or think even for a moment that you know it all. Never hold a grudge or try to get even, but plan your life around the noblest way to benefit others. Do your best to live as everybody's friend. Thanks, Sam and Nelly. Those are the most incredible words from Romans 12. Well, Chloe and Dan, it's great to be the first person to congratulate you on your marriage. 565 days, I read, on your service delayed. But you are here. You are married. Now, the last 18 months, as I'm sure we're all aware, there have been rather a number of lockdowns. And people have taken to all kinds of different hobbies. I don't know if you've been baking bread, growing herbs, anyone? <laughs> Joe Wicks exercises, the list goes on. But I've got a present for you this afternoon. And apparently, a hundred million pounds has been spent, not on my present, don't, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but on this particular thing, over lockdown, can, can I give this to you? It comes with my immense generosity. <laughs> the joke still works. <laughs> Shall I share? Yeah, I'm sure. It's, it's something very shallow. Yeah. So take this out of the bag, hold it up so everyone can see what it is. I'm just trying to work out how to get a Rolex out of the bag. You can all see what it is. It's, it's a jigsaw. Now, Dan, I was trying to get one in Wales. Uh, but that's as close as I could manage. It's sort of a green valley to remind you of the, the Welsh valley as well as you hear in England. <laughs> But jigsaw, the idea of jigsaw is that you put the pieces together and at the end of it you've got this amazing picture at the end. Now the letter to the Romans that we've heard read part of this afternoon, it was written by Paul, a leader of the early church, an apostle, somebody who went around teaching people how to follow Jesus. Now I did a count through that reading and apparently there are 24 different instructions. Now 24 is a very significant number because that's the number of pieces in a jigsaw that I can cope with. <laughs> but it's a significant amount of instructions. It's a lot of instructions. Now the Bible tells us that God is love. That is God's very nature. God's nature is to love. And it also tells us that the marriage relationship that you have now entered is an example of God's love. As Christ loved the church, so you are called to love one another. So, as you set out on this incredible journey, there's some pieces of the jigsaw 
to put together in this passage. Now, there are 24, as I've said. You'll be glad to know that I'm not going to go through 24 <laughs> different points. Um, I've only got 10 minutes. I'm going to go through four. And the first one was found in verse 10, where it talks about devotion to each other. Just look around. All of us look around at each other at the moment. Don't we all look fantastic this afternoon? We all look our best. We all scrub up really, really well. <laughs> now today is a day of butterflies in the summer, it's a day of excitement, but I'm sure we're all consciously aware that not every day is going to be like today. It's almost November, and I have to say November is my least favourite month, because it's when it goes dark and it's wet. And there'll be those days when you come home from work and you simply want to put Netflix on and sit in front of the telly and switch off. And Dan, you'll say to Chloe, or Chloe today, I need to tell you about my day today. And you'll go on at great length about everything that's gone on. And the other one will be sat there thinking, oh goodness me, I just want to switch off. <laughs> and it's at those points that devotion to one another, loving, putting each other first, is absolutely key. So Chloe and Dan, can I encourage you to put your devotion to God first, and after that devotion to God, that devotion to one another, to listen, to be present, with one another. Second thing I want to pick out from that reading is about being joyful. Now, we just started our seventh year here at Lynn. I, can't, I don't understand where those years have gone. But one thing we have noticed is that whenever we go to a church event, and whenever there's dancing involved, the first people on the dance floor are always from the Smith family. But there is something about dancing that is it's about joy, isn't it? It's about an outward expression of joy. Now, joy is an amazing word. Now, we may feel happy from time to time. I hope we all feel happy from time to time. But happiness is temporary. Happiness comes and goes. Joy is something that is rooted deep, deep down. And in this passage, what it says is that happiness, although happiness is temporary, joy that is deeper is rooted in hope. Now, there's different types of hope. I'm sure you've all been hoping that today everything could go as planned. And we've got there, and it's done that. You've probably also been hoping that the weather would be okay as you arrived. And we've got there, and we've done that. But the hope that is in this passage is a rather deep hope. It's the hope in life that is rooted in the person of Jesus Christ, who has died and who has risen. And it's out of that deep roots into God that another piece of the jigsaw is put together. When you root yourself there, you'll want to keep dancing. Because there'll be lots to celebrate. Because your life will be rooted in God. Third thing, commune with God. I love the way that translation that we heard today puts it. Commune, talk, talk with God. Being prayerful is about having that kind of relationship with one another and with God. That God is part of your marriage, is at the centre of your marriage, and you just talk to him about everyday life. It can sound a bit odd, odd to say that actually commitment and love are rooted in prayer. You know, we think of love and we think, yeah, like about the butterflies in the stomach. We think about, you know, the couple gazing into each other's eyes, riding off into the sunset. Now, you'll probably be going down the M4 in a few days and you'll sum up in your eyes and you'll be squinting. And that's probably not the image you have in mind. But love is far more than that, isn't it? Love is being faithful, it's being devoted. And Paul says love is demonstrated as we commit our lives in prayer to God and to each other. It's another piece of the jigsaw. And then finally, I don't know if you notice those words about being peaceful, peaceable with what, with other people, living at peace with one another. Now me and Claire, Claire sat down here, we have been married for 21 years. Um, and it really gave me a shock yesterday. We were doing the, the register and looking up when people were born and their names. And Chloe said, when are you born? 1995. Goodness me, I am old. We got married in 2000. I'm sure that was only a couple of years ago. But marriage, if we have learned anything about marriage, is that at the heart of marriage needs to be forgiveness. You are both human. As human beings, we all make mistakes. As human beings, you will say things from time to time that wind each other up. You've probably already done it today. And you will say things that you get on the wrong side of each other and, you know, you, you have those words like, you always do this. I don't know if you've ever found yourself saying that. You know, you always leave the toilet seat up. You always leave the top off the toothpaste, whatever it might be. In God's way, there is no you always. It's we forgive each other. We live in harmony with each other. It's the essential part of the jigsaw of Christian marriage, keeping short accounts, making sure that your relationship is better.
based on Christ. Just get your jigsaw out for a moment. Now, I want you to imagine that you're going to put this jigsaw together. Do you like jigsaws, by the way? I do. You do. <laughs>
blessing. Thank you for this today. This is how are you feeling? And now you get lost. But now you with you. And you'll hear me say, Never change, baby. So you 
Yeah, they're all mouth. Yeah, that's great. Jesus, we just want to thank you for this wonderful day. We want to thank you for the sunshine and for Chloe and Dan. And we just pray that as we share this meal as family, you would pour out your joy and your love over this place and we would have a great time of celebration. Amen. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, it is speech time. <laughs> and to start proceedings, pray silence for today's Father of the Bride. This all started off in a bar down in Brum when a young chap from Wales was out with his chum. He spotted a girl who was having a ball. They talked for a while and in love they did fall. Daniel was smitten by Chloe's beauty and charm. His heart was a flutter, but no cause for alarm. He only left Wales to get a degree, but the one year he'd planned soon turned into three. <laughs> the uni years finished and they rented a flat. They both started work and we thought that was that. Until Chloe called home with some news about moving to the city of Cardiff, where they'd now do their grooving. <laughs> they moved down the bay to join all the tourists. Yes, it's in Wales, but not for the purists. <laughs> the valleys is where you find the soul of a nation. And Dan took a job there, or more a vocation. He plucked up the courage to ask Chloe to wed. But knowing that she is not easily led, had to conjure a plan that would get her to Brum, to the cinema where they once had some fun. <laughs> he told her he wanted to see Rocket Man. <laughs> but she never knew that was not the true plan he actually made his own movie reel and went down on one knee Chloe's heart he would steal it seems like an age since that romantic scene and the party to mark the engagement routine a wedding in spring was the plan. Bulbs in bloom. With daffodils everywhere in the mind of the groom. <laughs> the reason we're here is because it ends well. On a bright autumn day when the colours look swell. But the daffodil season has passed many weeks. So Dan was insistent, your soup should have leeks. <laughs> welcome, welcome everyone to Chloe and Dan's wedding. And finally, we're here. My mum and dad used to tell me that if something is worth having, it's worth waiting for. Sound advice and very apt for today. Welcome to the biggest Anglo-Welsh event taking place outside of the Principality Stadium this year. It's been a trying time, but Chloe and Dan are finally converted into a married couple. I'd like to extend, from, from Deborah and I, extend a welcome to Joanne and to John, Dan's parents. And we are delighted that you're both here with us today. I'm sure everybody in the room will agree that both mothers look beautiful. <laughs> and are very special people. Deborah had a saying when the children were growing up that our job as parents 
was to give our children roots to grow and wings to fly. And seeing them getting married is a milestone on that journey. Although it's been tough for Chloe and Dan seeing the wedding postponed, it's allowed them to grow even stronger as a couple. They've shown great resilience, positivity, optimism and maturity. And you are a truly fantastic couple. And I stand here today both as a proud dad and as a proud father-in-law. Well done to both of you. Of course, today is the day I give the hand of my daughter to another man. Good luck, Dan. <laughs> Chloe is an amazing daughter and you look, you look radiant today, darling. A perfect English rose for your handsome Welsh prince. Beautiful on the outside, Chloe, and like I've always said, beautiful on the inside too. I can see you today as the stunning bride that you are. Your song has always been Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. But I can also still see the pigtails and freckles, the little girl who danced to the good ship lollipop next to Becky Evans, <laughs> and I can see Harry Highpants. Now Harry Highpants was Chloe's alter ego when she was about five. When she pulled her jama bottoms up to her chin and did a funny walk. And she still does it, and it still makes us laugh. And about the same time, Sam, three years younger, developed his own alter ego called Larry Lopants, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> Chloe, I've loved watching you grow and have your own adventures. Blitzing through school and university, acing your exams with the help of a few daddy stars to remind you to go back to the questions you left behind. <laughs> Putting your performance skills to good use at the Garrick Theatre as a DJ on Burn FM. And Chloe, you were always the loudest, loudest kid on the street and Scholars Green Lane in Lim is much quieter without you. <laughs> You loved having a younger baby brother. You were very nurturing. In fact, Mum and I always called you Mummy too. But you were smart with it. It was always Sam who wanted another chocolate biscuit, never you. You've been friends growing up. And I hope that continues as you and Dan and Sam and Millie continue your lives as married couples. Daniel. There is no doubt that you are a proud and passionate Welshman. But today, you lined up with an evenly balanced Anglo-Welsh team of best man and groomsmen. James, Ben and Joe, representing the Red Dragon of Wales. Gianluca, Lawrence and Tom, representing the Red Cross of St George. Although I suspect that Gianluca might be wearing his lucky tricolory underpants. <laughs> I've loved getting to know you, Dan, over the last six years, and I cherish our relationship. You're a man of real integrity and compassion, with a real heart for the underdog. Well, you have to be, when you're a Newport County supporter. <laughs> you show great respect in asking for Chloe's hand in marriage, and we had our coffee co moment. A moment in Cardiff Bay when Dan and I went for a coffee after a park run. He bought me a coffee and stared at his coffee and shuffled on his chair and stared at his coffee a bit more and, until I said, Dan, this is it, isn't it? And he said, yeah, and we agreed and we just got on with it. <laughs> Dan, you're great at bringing people together, engaging with others, and you're a great role model to all the young people who you teach. You're the big brother of the Newbury family, and now also a big brother to Sam. Although I'm not sure Sam's ever forgiven you for terrorizing him when he stayed with you and Chloe in Birmingham, <laughs> jumping out of wardrobes and hiding under his bed. 
You're, you have more than proven yourself as a worthy son-in-law. And certainly in the early days, I probably made you work harder than was fair at times. We can see how much you love Chloe, and we welcome you with open arms into our family. Croiso, Daniel, Croiso. <laughs> and so, Mr. and Mrs. Newberry, what Deborah and I have learned from 30 years of marriage so far is that you do have ups and downs. Being best friends helps to keep you strong. None of us is perfect and we all make mistakes. So just hang on to today and what you have promised to each other in the presence of God. And as I say to you both every time we say cheerio after a visit, look after each other. Ladies and gentlemen, please charge your glasses and be standing. As we toast, Chloe and Daniel, the happy couple. The happy There's been a few times we all wondered if we were going to make it today, and I'm still not sure if I really believe this is happening. A global pandemic is pretty intense marriage preparation, and there were a couple of times I thought, we need to get this marriage over the line before Dan changes his mind. <laughs> but seriously, I cannot express how incredibly grateful and relieved I am that we can actually celebrate together today. Some thank yous that I would like to make. To my mother-in-law, Joanne, Thanks for raising such a kind-hearted man. The love you have for your family... <laughs> the love you have for your family shines through your children. I am so grateful that you've opened your heart and family to me and I have felt wel welcome since the moment that I met you. Thanks for always being there for me if I need a coach. And sorry, I'm probably never going to get used to the fact that your front door is always open. <laughs> Thank you to my mum and dad. To me, you two are actual rock stars. You have always made sure I know I am loved. You've supported my achievements and you've given me and Sam life-changing opportunities. Your relationship has modeled to me what I would like our marriage to be like. You are such a team. You support one another through good times and bad and you never lose your sense of fun and adventure. I love you both very much. To my bridesmaids, thank you. <laughs> Jen, you've been part of mine and Dan's relationship since the beginning, and part of the key, is he gonna be your boyfriend? Discussion. <laughs> I think Dan either needs to thank you or blame you for the next six years that have followed. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, you've guided me through my faith, and you've been a friend that I can rely on to talk me down from the ceiling when I'm having a highly strong moment. Laura, you put up with me during the phase of my life where I was hashtag finding myself. <laughs> and you stuck around. I'm lucky to have a friend with such patience. Lauren, my new sister. Knowing you has taught me about strength and courage. You are honestly a remarkable person. And I can't wait to spend the rest of my life being the embarrassing sister-in-law cheering you on through life. And now to my husband. <laughs> so mine and Dan's love story is one full of romance. It started in a nightclub called Players, <laughs> where I walked over to a very good looking guy and I asked if he wanted to buy me a drink. <laughs> I know, who should I think I was? He said no. <laughs> Thank goodness this isn't where the story ended. And today is evidence that persistence pays off. <laughs> and it also gets you a vodka lime soda from the best looking man in the club. <laughs> Dan, you are such a wonderful man. Your gentleness, openness, and integrity are so beautiful. Anyone who is around you can feel your energy. That I believe is always ready for two possible things. One, to support and build somebody up. Or two, to get up to mischief. <laughs> I feel to me you are in equal balance, my number one cheerleader and my number one winder-upper. I should have asked you to write into your vows to never hide in the house and jump out at me again. 
Waiting 565 extra days to be able to say I'm your wife has felt like forever. Mainly because I'd already practiced my new signature so many times and I haven't been able to use it yet. But seriously, being with you makes me more me. You make me feel safe and confident and exciting. With you, I feel like spontaneity is more possible and I don't have to remain so tightly in control of everything. Thank you for helping me to grow as a person and releasing the sense of adventure I always knew was inside. The last year has been the most difficult one of my life and you've been my rock. When I didn't feel like me anymore, you reminded me who I truly am. You didn't rush me and you reminded me to care for myself. Loving you is the easiest thing I've ever had to do. It just happens. Our hearts are just connected. I thank God for bringing us together and I'm so excited for our future together. Cheers to finally being Mr. and Mrs. Noobs. Have we stopped the timer, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> so, right thank you. Uh, so, whilst today is a day full of happiness uh, for all of us here today, there are those we hold in our hearts and our memories who unfortunately can't be with us today. Um, and therefore, um, if you'd just like to join Chloe and I, so on behalf of myself and my wife, we'd like to raise a glass in their memory. So, if we could just raise a glass to um, friends and family um, who can't be with us. Thanks. Okay, so, um, strangely, I've had a few people come up to me already and say, oh, are you really nervous? And I'm actually not. Uh, I've been looking forward to giving this speech today. Um, mainly because never again will I be in a room with my mother, mother-in-law and wife and be able to get a word in edgeways. <laughs> so... Please bear with me as I make the most of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. <laughs> uh, there will be a number of uh, toasts throughout my speech, as you can imagine, so, um, so please make sure you're all topped up. Uh, my main aim uh, over the next... I was going to give away the time, but I won't. <laughs> my main aim is to try and uh, get you all as drunk as possible so you can't remember anything James has to say in his. <laughs> so, firstly, on behalf of my beautiful wife... I'll try that again. Firstly, on behalf of my beautiful wife. Thank you. No, we will wait. We would like to thank you all for coming today. It's been a very long time coming, and it certainly be, wouldn't be the same without you all here. It would be a lot cheaper for a start. <laughs> Joking aside, though, uh, there's been plenty of twists and turns along the way to get us here. We've had three lockdowns, two postponements, and then a nationwide fuel shortage, just to spice things up a bit. <laughs> We've also had lots of tears, tantrums, late nights, emergency Zoom meetings, and that was just Ian when he realised his daughter was marrying a Welshman. <laughs> <laughs> However, if there's one thing I'm sure of is that this bumpy road that we've had to travel down is the perfect preparation for the ups and downs that will undoubtedly come our way as we become husband and wife today. If the past 18 months have taught us anything is that nothing is more essential to us than to have you all here safe, healthy-ish, uh, some of you, <laughs> and that we are grateful for all of your friendship, support, love, and the opportunity to spend the best day of our lives with you. So please join me in raising a toast to you, friends and family. <laughs> to friends and family. <laughs> so, this wonderful wedding reception and carrots, I've heard, um, <laughs> we're all enjoying, is the result of the time that I got down on one knee and popped the big question. Ian, how much does a wedding in Cheshire cost? <laughs> Seriously though, today would just not have been possible without the support and generosity of my wonderful father and mother-in-law. Ian and Deborah are great people with a depth of love that is so vast and unconditional it never fails to amaze me. And I feel so blessed 
that today I can officially become a part of the togetherness that they have created in their family. I cannot thank you enough for all that you have done for me and for us and I am grateful for the relationship that we share. You are both such role models to me. Thank you for raising my best friend and you can trust me when I say that I will always love, respect and take care of your beautiful daughter. Please join me in raising a glass to Ian and Deborah. A huge thank you to my parents. Dad, you produced one very handsome, <laughs> intelligent son, but I'm not sure what happened with Ben and Joe. <laughs> I'm really happy and proud that you are here with me today. Thank you for teaching me from a young age that the four most important words in any marriage are I'll do the dishes. <laughs> I know I haven't made things easy for you, so thank you for always trying. And for your continuous love and support, I'm excited for the opportunity for us to build memories together in the future. Something I've always said is that I am who I am because of my wonderful mother. Woo! <laughs> yeah, amen to that. She is my foundation and my building block. I've learned how to be the man I am today because of this amazing woman. Mum, you have shown me the value of extending myself to others. And I stand here today in awe of how you have managed to bring us all up whilst battling through some of life's challenges. The funny thing about today is is for many years everybody used to think that we were husband and wife. <laughs> Having a beard from the age of six probably didn't help those rumours. <laughs> I'm on about myself, of course. <laughs> um, but as soon as these wedding photos make it onto Facebook and social media, half of South Wales are going to be shocked that in fact that she was my mother all along. <laughs> Life has dealt, uh, dealt my mum some really tough blows. It really, really has. Um, but you've taught us all, as a family, that we all can do hard things. Thank you for the countless selfless sacrifices that you have made for me to be able to reach this point in my life and for all of your help. Your outrageous generosity in making today happen as well. I hope you enjoy every single minute of today. I am so proud of you. You look beautiful. We did it. I love you. Please join me in raising a toast to my mum and dad, John and Joe. John and Joe. To my wonderful groomsmen, Tom, Lawrence, Jan, Ben and Joe, thanks for everything you've done in the lead up to the wedding, for all the work you've put in today and for rallying around and supporting my best man James when he needed it the most a couple of years ago. There was some top ushering going on at the church earlier. I spotted it. Um, even if I did have to ask my brothers Ben and Joe to stop checking handbags on the way in. <laughs> you can take the boys out of Newport, but you can't take Newport out of the boys. <laughs> Obviously the main role of a groomsman is to stand around looking good. Obviously you've all let me down on that front today. <laughs> But you've more than made up for it with your help in organising a fantastic stag do in Germany, even if the locals couldn't wait to get rid of us. <laughs> I've had so many interesting adventures with all of you boys, and not a single one of them can be talked about in front of my new in-laws. <laughs> so I'm going to move on quickly. <laughs> to James. Uh, Sav, my best man, my best mate, and extra brother. If you do see James without a drink tonight, then please go and get him one. He is one of the bravest men that I know. Two years ago, just around the time we began planning this wedding, unfortunately he lost his amazing, inspiring and wonderful mother. You could not have wished to have met a more genuine, cool, fun-loving person than Helen, and she lives on through James, Liam and Adam, and she would have been so proud to have been here today, seeing her boy James up here, all dressed up, being the kind, compassionate and wonderful soul that he is. Your mum, Sav, is certainly looking down on us today, 
with the biggest smile on her face, sipping an even bigger gin and tonic. <laughs> and I have no dates about that. The thing is, James and I have known each other uh, for over 20 years. So in that time, there's certainly a lot of material that I could stand up here and talk about. But I really don't see the point in using this speech to bring up silly stories. <laughs> or anything that would be too incriminating. <laughs> that would really be childish. I'm also going to avoid sharing any embarrassing facts, <laughs> like James's weird celebrity crushes being Fizz and Hayley Cropper from Coronation Street. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> it's definitely true. Instead, I would rather use this time to just stand here and say amazing, brilliant things about him. Have you got the hint yet, mate? Yeah, yeah. You've got the hint. Great. I'll stop. Sav, I'm so proud to call you my best man. Uh, despite everything, you still have the strength to offer yourself so generously to this wedding and to give us the day that we both wanted. Uh, thank you for making anything that was important to me and to us important to you. Um, and I'm truly grateful for that. Finally, with that being said, as, as good as James is, and he is good, he does have one negative trait, and that, that he has a terrible, terrible habit of discerning fact from fiction. <laughs> and can, when under intense pressure, come up with make-believe stories. <laughs> also a bit of a red rush. That often involve me being either drunk, naked, or both. <laughs> So just keep that in mind when you hear him speak shortly. Please join me in raising a toast to my groomsman and my best man. Thank you very much. And so, to my beautiful wife, Chloe. You were the most beautiful girl on the dance floor that night. I can still see you now. As you were making your way towards me doing the worm across the room. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Chloe was going to share a recollection of the first time we met, but without wanting to get this marriage malarkey off on the wrong foot, there is a few things that we do need to clear up. Number one. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Chloe certainly didn't ask me for a drink. She demanded it. <laughs> Number two. She stated quite clearly she would only accept the drink if it was a double. <laughs> And number three, I didn't buy her the drink. But she did somehow end up with one. So, whoever the mystery Birmingham drink buyer is, and I actually think it's Matt on table 10, I think we may need to swap seats. <laughs> but I will forever be in your debt. So, Chloe, it is six years too late. But. Here is your double vodka, lime, and soda. <laughs> Should have got the one in Birmingham, it was cheaper. <laughs> Chloe, now we're married, your new initials will be C A N. CAN. Now you know I love an acronym, but never has somebody's initials been more appropriate. You have the most unbelievable can-do attitude. You are constant and relentless in your positivity, no matter what is thrown our way. Always play in the glad game, wherever you may go. Right from the day we met, I have been inspired by your love of helping others. Watching you work through the lockdowns was an honor. You are an unbelievably talented, intelligent woman, and you are someone who will always leave the 99 for the one. You are an advocate, for those who need it the most. And I feel so lucky to know you, let alone love you, and to spend the rest of my life with you. There is no other person in the world who I'd rather have by my side to do life with. It really didn't take me long, guys, to work out Chloe was the one for me. It was a Friday night, and I asked her, Chloe, what should, what should we do on the weekend, love? She said, I was thinking we could go and watch Newport County play and go for a few beers in Bar Amber afterwards. <laughs> It was at this point I just knew she was the one for me. <laughs> after just a few months into our relationship, I unfortunately fell ill. And after years of burying my feelings and bottling everything up, I ended up having to take some time away from work and move back home. 
Now at this point, a lot of people, just a few months into a new relationship, in their last year of university, would have run a million miles away. But all Chloe did was come running a million miles closer to help me. When I was at my lowest, she used to say to me that I am the sky and the thoughts and the feelings I was experiencing were the clouds. Well, today we're under that same sky, dreaming the same dream. And just like the sky, you were always there, my constant forever by my side. Thanks for never giving up on me, and I'm so glad that I clung on, we clung on, and we could have our moment in the sun today. <laughs> Chloe has been planning this day for a very long time, and she'd had most aspects on it decided even before we met. I was just the final piece in the jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in there, by the way, but seamless. <laughs> when I did finally propose, she hesitated for a little while. It's never good, especially when a rocket man's about to start, before finally saying yes. And at first, I thought she was going to say no, always having second thoughts. It turned out she was actually working out how many vegetarians were going to be at the wedding. <laughs> And she then even come up with a way of postponing the wedding on different dates to get three anniversaries. <laughs> and lastly, you'll be pleased to know, if I did have a pound for every time somebody said it will be worth the wait, then I probably would have enough money to honeymoon in New York and not in the rain in the north of England. <laughs> but, truth be told, I would have waited forever for you, Chloe. I would have waited until the end of time if I had to. So please join me in raising a toast to the new Mrs. Newbury. <laughs> Thank you. Right, ladies and gentlemen, before he sneaks off to watch Coronation Street. <laughs> This is terrifying. Uh, right, okay. Right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, yeah. Um, I hope everyone's having a great day. I can't believe we made it. It's finally here. Fantastic. Right, where do I start? For those of you that don't know me, I'm James, and I've known Dan my whole life. He's not only been a best friend, but I consider him family too. He's always been like a brother to me. As if I needed another one of them. Uh, <laughs> I've always admired and looked up to Dan, and I couldn't be proud of him today. <laughs> I've seen him grow and, and achieve so much, from watching him referee every, ga every game, every Sunday, to putting himself forward to dress up as the mascot, Spitty the Dog, for someone to shout, Wow, Spitty's put on some weight. For Dan to remove the head off the costume, tell the crowd to F off, and storm off the pitch. <laughs> I imagine he's got thicker skin nowadays being a teacher. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone would disagree with me when I say Dan wouldn't have become the man he is today without the amazing family that raised him. They make you truly feel like one of their own and never fail to put a smile on your face. As much as I love standing with Dan, John, Ben and Joe at the football every Saturday having a laugh, it's Dan's close relationship with his mum Joanne and his sister Lauren that moulded his unique personality. So much so, <laughs> that he was sometimes wear their clothes. I'm really not sorry for that. Um, <laughs> as I already mentioned, I've been lucky to see Dan achieve so much, but I'd say his greatest achievement is finding Chloe. She's by far one of the kindest and sweetest people I've ever met. 
anyone that can live 170 miles away from their family, do the job that she does, and puts up with Dan deserves a medal. <laughs> so would you join me in raising a glass to Chloe? To Chloe. Love that. You've been Dan's shoulder to lean on and pick them up when he's needed it the most. He's extremely punching, I mean lucky, <laughs> to, have you in his, to have you in his life and together you make the perfect team. One of the things I admire about Dan and Chloe is their sense of adventure and love of travelling. But Chloe, whatever you do, don't let Dan book the hotels. <laughs> Me and the boys have had night terrors ever since Blackpool. It's the worst trip ever. It, it really was the worst trip ever. Um, <laughs> right. I could stand here all day and tell stories, but there just isn't enough time. Like Mad Dan mentioned doing it, it really isn't. But as all I know is I'm looking forward to making memories with the both of you. 100%. There's one more thing I wanted to say before I wrap this up. When Dan asked me to be best man, I was absolutely over the moon. But as many as you may know, two months later, my mum passed away, which made organizing Dan's stag a really difficult task. But if it wasn't for Dan, his brothers, my brother, and all the lads, I, um, I, I, it, it, I, well, I couldn't have done it. I really couldn't have done it, boys. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It was one of the best weekends ever as well. It was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got through that happy days. Right. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, and getting Dan back home in one piece. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Happy days. Right. I think we would all agree that Chloe looks absolutely beautiful. And Dan doesn't look too shabby either. I just believe you didn't choose to wear a dress as well. Um, so finally, I think it's time to raise a glass to the happy Mr. and Mrs. Newberry. I didn't think I'd ever say it to Mr. and Mrs. Newberry. Whew. That's it. Thank you. And there's a thousand things I've wanted to say. But I've never been brave No, I've never been brave Three, two, You did so The whole world An island to yourself You're an island in yourself And I think it's time That I tell you How I feel This is how I feel And I get lost when I'm with you And you'll hear me say Never change, baby Stay the same, lady That I've known For so long I never change A hundred places I've wanted to see But you see them with me But you see them with me And I don't care Where we go Cause you are home You are my home And we can stay In cheap hotels Let's just pay to entertain ourselves And I get lost when I'm with you And you'll hear me say Never change, baby Stay the same, lady Did I know for so So long.
sure you can all join in a little later. Give them a round of applause, come on, steer them on. The first dance is man and wife. You've been waiting for this moment for a long, long time, haven't you? Chloe and Dan. Oh, and we're just going to mention, I'm Cheska and this is Daryl, so we've gone the wrong way. We'll just swap for this. Yes. 